Hello everyone, Luke here, welcome back to the channel. So if you saw my last video, which was 1106, you would know that we started to electrify my scooter that I built ages ago. So we got up to a point where we managed to get the motor spinning the back wheel with the motor controller. So there's actually only a few things left to do. One of them things is to build a battery carrier. So let's take a look how I'm gonna do this. So believe it or not, these are going to be our main parts of the battery carrier. And these are just eight mil bar, which have been bent in a very specific way like this. And they're two identical. So how this is actually gonna get attached is really cool. So I've got this piece of steel bar right here and basically this tube gets welded onto this and then we drill two holes and we make sure that we mirror it onto the other side. And then basically we can just bolt this into the frame and it's gonna hold it really nice and steady. And once all of that's been installed, we can weld some metal bars going across and that should be more than enough to handle my batteries. So let's do that. So before things start getting a little bit too crazy and we start welding things together, what I'm gonna do is just offer it up. So this is the bar that's actually gonna be welded to my uh, battery carrier. So I'm just gonna offer it up to make sure that it fits. If I press it against there, you can see that it's gonna clear the wheel and it's sitting nice and square. Right, so let's weld it together. So I'm now starting on the battery carrier and this side is actually completely installed. It's been welded to the steel bar and I've got my holes drilled out. And the reason why I started on this side first was because I just wanna make sure that this is sitting nice and straight and nice and square to the wheel. And this actually gives me a bit of a guide to install the other side. So what I've done is I've drilled the holes out in my steel bar and I've just glued this battery carrier on. And this means that I'm able to do very minor adjustments to make sure everything is nice and level and square. So what I'm gonna do now is weld it all together and get it installed. And there you have it, our cro oh. <clears throat> and there you have it, our battery carrier has actually been welded and installed. So what we've got to do now is take this off and weld some cross sections on the top of this to make sure that it's definitely gonna be strong enough to carry these batteries. Right, so let's weld these together. So here is my battery carrier that's been completely welded up. As you can see, this thing is seriously strong and it shouldn't have any problems taking two lead acid batteries on the back. So let's take a look at what I've done next. So as some of you guys might have noticed in the last video, the wheel was actually spinning the wrong way, which didn't occur to me. So what I had to do was actually change this whole setup, basically spin it around so the drive was on this side instead of this side, which meant my tensioner was actually quite obsolete. And as I've learned a lot about derailers, I actually installed a derailer onto this, which is, you know, giving it dynamic and sufficient tension. So I thought that was pretty cool and it was definitely worth a bit of an update. So this thing is actually super torquey. So what we're gonna do is connect everything up, give the throttle a little twist and see how this back wheel spins. So let's do it. So that is truly awesome. So what we've got to do next is actually tidy up these electronics a little bit, do a little bit of work on the foot plate so these wires for the motor and the battery can exit through the back of it. And then we can actually secure the batteries and take this out for a little ride. So let's do that. Right, so I decided to change the type of battery that I'm gonna be using. So I'm using these nickel metal hydride batteries from Highquick. And we actually had two 12 volt backs lying about that Rob made a while ago. And this is actually gonna be the perfect uh, application for them. So I wanna thank Highquick for that. And now I'm just gonna let these charge up and we can take this outside and see what this thing can do. So I wanna thank Highquick for sending these batteries over for free. And now that they're charged up, let's get this thing outside and see if it will move me. Okay, so we're in the car park now, so I'm going to connect this bad boy up and see if it'll take me along. So let's give it a go. So that works. 
So before we go back inside, I thought I'd get one more shot of me going up and down the car park on this little wee scooter. Right, so let's do it. So this thing is actually incredibly awesome. It seems to me that I've got these gear ratios just right. 42 teeth on the back, 12 teeth on the front. And that's given me enough torque to get this thing going without really the need of me pushing it. And this thing should top out at around 10 to 15 miles an hour, which to me seems plenty enough considering that walking pace is anywhere between three to four miles an hour, depending on how quickly that, that you walk. So for me, it really isn't the matter of finishing this project. It's the amount of learning that's gone on during this project, considering that I had to make my own sprockets to make sure that they're completely center and true, installing my own derailers, which meant I had to learn a little bit about that, getting the chain installed, the battery packs, and everything connected up to the motor controller. So now if I ever have to tackle a similar project to this in the future, I now know what I'm doing, and I know for a fact I'll be able to do it better. So this whole process has just been incredibly cool and I'm actually kind of excited that it's done now. With that being said, that does bring me to the end of this video. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer them all. Anyway guys, I hope you have a great day and I will see you later.